Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so. A lot of ways that you can interact and see the program these days as we have it online, but of course, live streaming through the Friend Reliable iHeartRadio app on air, of course, never going to go neglect that audience, but also online by doing it through KTSMRadio.com. But you can also, again, find us over on the very many social sites we're up on these days, including, of course, uh, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show Facebook page and YouTube channel, as well as on some of our partner pages, particularly the group, Remember in El Paso When. This, of course, is the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. Do have a history moment today at the top of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk that we will be playing back here. But uh, joining us here as we have in studio today as we are continuing uh, more or less our theming for the end of this month, October as it is, whether you like to call it, be it spooky season, be it holiday. Halloween, be it Dia de los Muertos, of course, there's a lot of cultural significance behind all of that beyond the trick-or-treating. So here to talk a little bit more about all of that, we are joined here in studio right now by Gia Wolschlager, museum curator for the El Paso Funeral Museum. Thanks very much for joining us here today. Thank you, Andrew. I am so excited to be here today. Absolutely. i got to say that I uh, appreciate y'all agreeing to be on here because I'll be perfectly honest, I was not aware that, I mean, of course, there are funeral homes, there are funeral services, there are things that go on and have gone on for generations in town, but the, act, the fact that there was an actual museum dedicated to it had escaped my notice until fairly recently. So for those that are similarly unfamiliar here or wondering about, okay, so what goes on for a funeral museum, tell us a little bit about what it is and what you all do. Yes, that's why I'm so excited to be here because I'm afraid that somebody will miss out on the exciting opportunity to see our own local funeral museum. So um, probably about four years ago, I was in Houston, Texas, and that is where the National Funeral Museum Mm. is located. And a lot of people don't know it, but I highly recommend it as a tourist stop. I know it sounds weird, but absolutely Absolutely, fascinating tourist stop if you're ever in Houston. So, of course, being a tourist, we decided to go, and Mr. Purchase from Purchase Funeral Homes uh, went to school there. Uh, Mm. So it's also um, an SCI school who has the museum there. So we visited, and of course, we were like, oh my gosh, we can do that here. And so we have really encompassed more of the history of our region. So we've brought to light a lot of that. And being in the funeral industry, I've noticed that people um, tend to be a little bit scared about crossing that threshold of the funeral Mm, home. Okay. And so with that theory, we have created something that is completely educational. So I love to be able to have schools there, families. It is absolutely eye-opening for anybody that wants an education on everything that that is in the funeral industry because that is man's oldest cultural, traditional um, profession. That Mm. is what a a funeral service uh, profession is. It's one of our oldest cultural um, professions. So to bring that to light, I think, is really fascinating, along with a lot of things that happen in our community, such as Day of the Dead. So there's a lot. Mm-hmm. So I brought my cheat sheets because I don't want to miss out on any of the details. <laughs> Absolutely. Here. It's very interesting you mentioned that way because, I mean, there's a lot of phrases that may come to mind, as you mentioned, that like uh, the world's oldest prof- profession, whether it be war or uh, <clears throat> other things. Uh, but really, when we talk about it, not even just records wise, but when we start looking at, well, archaeology, paleontology, practically, the way we kind of define civilization to an extent is what happens to those that have passed on. And that's, again, in the archaeological record, finding, you know, burial sites, whether it be, you know, the uh, giant mounds that exist in some parts of the world, 
pyramids come to mind, obviously, as well as even just simple in the ground kind of things here. The act of actually taking care of that, of recognizing the importance and particularly, you know, the importance to those that are still there of those who have passed on is, again, it's kind of one of those bywords for how you define human civilization whenever you're looking back through the mists of time. Absolutely. Actually, as we travel the world, we make it a point to stop at cemeteries Mm -hmm. anywhere that we go. And in that cemetery, you find extremely a lot of history, knowledge, Mm -hmm. and the culture of how each culture managed like you said, the passing on of their loved ones. So it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And it's interesting that you all have a museum specifically for this. I was not fully aware that there was a national one, though that makes perfect sense here. But I got to say that I think a lot of people may have a sense of the fact that, well, you know, Burial sites, whether it be, you know, graveyards, whether it be, you know, mausoleums, those kind of things have this, I mean, funerary, but also vaguely museum, like you're not supposed to be loud and there's like history on display there. So whenever people ask you, so so why do you need a museum for it? Can't you just go to a graveyard or what kind of, I'm sure that questions come up like that. What do you tell people? Absolutely. There is just so much education. So we have about 12 permanent exhibits that we have that each have a theme that are aimed for education. And there's actually a scavenger hunt that I've created for children because there's a lot of details that we take for granted and the scavenger hunt forces them to focus in on each exhibit and the details uh, represented in each exhibit. So that's also, that's very exciting. However, we also have events every month. For instance, September, Mm -hmm. educational month. I'm going to just test you. Do you know where Saved by the Bell came from? I, of course, there's the TV show, but before that, <laughs> I want to say that it was part of that vaguely Victorian, kind of like not, I'm going to call it exactly paranoia, but the fear of being buried alive. alive. And so the idea of those kind of contraptions where there would be a bell above the grave and a string going down into the casket or coffin. And so that if someone was just taking a really big nap, really <laughs> deep sleep, they could ring it here. And I want to say that... um uh, George Washington, among other things, had similar kind of concerns here to where he was didn't have the bell that was a little bit, you know, more of a Victorian concept, but that uh, he was essentially like his his will and his last, you know, testament. Those kind of things was leave me out for three days, and if I wake up, leave me alone. Kind of thing <laughs> Absolutely, here. that's where the whole phrase comes from. So September is our educational month for kids to be able to enjoy a lot of things that do come from the history of the funeral industry. So that one being one. So we also have Memento Mori, which is an art class that we do with hair from the deceased. And it's a beautiful art, artistic um, kind of culture. And we have people that come in and teach it. So every month on top of the exhibits that are educational, we've got events going on constantly to continue educating our community. Very interesting there. Memento Mori, of course, Mm -hmm. the idea that remember you will die, which is can be seen as a, you know, macabre phrase, like, are you really going to go around that pessimistic? But there's a lot of particularly, you know, like Catholic traditions and others that take it as a, remember, this is all you got, so make the best of it kind of thing. A more of a, I guess, a, a corollary phrase would be, so the, memento mori, therefore carpe diem. Kind carpe of thing diem. Is, is essentially the way to seize the day. And the art is beautiful. We have actual samples from that have been donated to us that you can see on display at the museum as well. Wow. So, of course, uh, the few, the museum itself here, we've had uh, some of the logos that we have popped up on screen here that uh, very obvious influences there, of course, from, uh, you know, uh, by purchase funeral homes. But, of course, even in the logo there of the, you know, Calavera, the painted skulls that are very much a part of uh, the local cultural traditions and the regional ones that we have as well. But I also want to mention here that uh, not even just as a good circumstance here to talk about it today at the end of this month when we are approaching some of those important, again, cultural dates related to this, there is, of course, an updating an upcoming event that you will have a little bit later early next month right correct we try to uh celebrate every year our grand opening was on day of the dead Mm. so we try to uh memorialize that every single year and we have a huge event and there's a lot going on so i really uh, i would love to see everybody out it's free number one free for the whole family come out and enjoy it uh we have performers out there we have an art installation we have a classic car show and hearse Mm -hmm. competition uh, I think we'll go into a little bit more details on the hearses later mm. because there are some fun things, not to mention go-karts con- uh, oh, okay. that have been converted from hearses into gar- go- go- go-karts. So I think it's a great show. Uh, we have an altar competition that is mm. beautiful. Uh, 
Let's see. We've got Coco playing in the main chapel. Ah, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> we have vendors. All of our vendors are local artists with beautiful art crafts for sale. Mm. We have food trucks. And, of course, to end the whole night, we have partnered up with Lucha Frontera. And that was brought on from Peter Gonzalez is the mastermind behind Lucha Frontera. Mm. And so we will be doing the Lucha to end the event. And, of course, like I said, free. So I, I think it's going to be an amazing event. Absolutely. So, again, some of the details there. The El Paso Funeral Museum, Hearse and Classic Car Show, and Shrine. Shrine. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Altar Contest, Museum Anniversary, Lucha Frontera Exhibition, all starting at 2 p.m. on November 6th. So coming up here shortly. And so, again, you mentioned it's free. If people want to find out more information, where's the best place for them to do that? I would definitely encourage them to go to the El Paso Funeral Museum.com. You can also visit us at purchasefuneralhomes.com. Our websites have all the information. We are also on Facebook, either one, mm-hmm. El Paso Funeral Museum, Purchase Funeral Homes. And so we're trying to blast out the information as much as possible. Absolutely. So this relates, of course, to some of the exhibits that you all have. We mentioned a couple here, and we'll get to more here in just a bit, including, um, I mean, of course, the Hearst and Classic Car Show, y'all be having, but y'all have your own, essentially, I mean, this may not be exactly the right phrase, but it's the way I think of it, rolling sock stock, so to speak here, of, uh, well, essentially, funerary vehicles of all shapes, stripes, sizes, and through generations. Yes, absolutely. The one I love to see the kids when they walk into the museum, their eyes just get so big when they see an 1850 horse drawn carriage. You can see it right there. That's a hearse. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely beautiful and it's original refurbished. Wow. And again, 1850s horse drawn wooden carriage hearse. So imagine essentially like your carriage from, you know, any of those time periods in which horse and buggy and carriage were kind of a thing. So it's got the seat up front, the elevated seat up front and the horse hitches, of course. But instead of a cab, it is a essentially a glass box that almost looks like a bigger version of a coffin, except for that it has glass sides and then a coffin goes into it. Into it, correct. And you will see that up, up close, which is really neat. I mean, it's just great to see. And then you can see kind of in front of it, I'm going to bring up this one real quick. Mm-hmm. That is a mourning dress. That, uh, that is okay. a traditional mourning dress. And she is also from the same period, from the late 1800s. Morning as in not manana, but (laughs) M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Correct. It is what people would wear when their loved one would pass away. And depending on the culture or the tradition, they would wear it for a certain period of time. Mm. So that is actually on loan. And it is absolutely gorgeous. And I have to just say that she watches over the museum for us. Excellent there. I feel like it's come up maybe a little bit more in the public consciousness and uh, be both only due to popular media recent years. I remember I have definitely watched a decent amount of Downton Abbey over my spouse's shoulder there. And one of the things they bring up in one of the first seasons there is, oh, when can we be out of mourning, essentially, as one of the, hey, no spoilers here, don't worry, <laughs> but it's in like the very first part of the first season. And they kind of, I mean, they do time jumps in that program. They kind of go to when the next thing happened because... <clears throat> Even at that point in time, it would be months before, you know, the daily, you know, routine would be, you know, upended or something exciting happened. So they focus on that in the program. But essentially, mourning could be being in mourning, wearing black, showing grief publicly could take a period of months, if not years. Correct. And actually, more recently, I was studying. We have the famous funeral from the Queen that just passed. Oh, of course. And in researching a little bit of the details, there is a huge protocol Mm -hmm. in what everyone must wear in the morning period and the time period. So we've added a little bit of that to the museum this time. So we've just added that exhibit, but it is fascinating. We've also got a video there so you can learn a little bit about the tradition of what happened. I mean, this happened just recently. So we we got to witness a huge cultural um, funeral from the queen. And as, again, just to kind of underscore the importance of the culture here to these two things that came to my uh, attention during that whole process was that all members of the royal family were required to travel with mourning attire here, black and appropriate things. And also the fact that essentially immediately or even technically before the coronation, upon her ascension to the throne, and maybe not the ceremony of the ascension to the throne of Queen Elizabeth, 70 years ago, there was a plan of, okay, what happens when she dies? And we're, I mean, of course, it may make sense. And I was like, okay, she has been the longest serving monarch now. But no, this planning has been in place for 
decades. Decades, absolutely. It has just been fascinating reading about all the traditions that they have to follow. And uh, like other cultures as well. I mean, as, even as um, Hispanics here, mm-hmm. I remember my grandmother. Um, I don't know if we all kind of remember my grandmother wore black. And so mm-hmm. the tradition is definitely inlaid in all of the cultures. Again, that's uh, Chia Wolschlager, museum curator for the El Paso Funeral Museum. We are talking about both the existence of the museum and, of course, their upcoming event that they are going to be having on November 6th. Again, you can see it on screen there, but if you're not, uh, their hearse and classic car show and shrine, the altar contest, uh, museum anniversary, and Lucha Frontera exhibition. Again, November 6th, starting at 2 p.m. All the details on that, you can find them, of course, online at ElPasoFuneralMuseum.com or on social media. Got to take that first break of this hour right now, so Coming out of this break, talking more with Chia here about some of, well, what's going on in the museum, some more of the exhibits, and some more of the cultural traditions as well. So stay tuned with more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. We are, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. You can go there for our weekly promo announcements and what is coming up in that coming end of the week there, including some of the pictures and guest information, as you could have done this week, and we'll do it every other week that we are on, of course. You can also go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Both of those sites, you can, of course, get the archive and the previous editions that we have done. But particularly over on the YouTube, you can also get not only this show, but, of course, the entire series of El Paso History, El Paso Gold DVDs, uh, covering more than the last couple of decades of history production here in the Sun City and the larger Borderland region. Plus, more of the, well, other more recent history production, including the 20 ABC7 El Paso History TV series that I had a hand in on, a hand in on doing some of the production on the back end. All of that available free and uploaded for your viewing pleasure. Again, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Of course, a reminder to support some of our advertisers. Uh, Pepe's Restaurant in Canutillo open for in-house dining, 6761 Donovan Drive. Call Pepe's at 915-877-2152. That's 915-877-2152. I won't be able to head out there myself today, but, of course, you can find them again, 6761 Donovan Drive, basically just south of Talbot. And they're, of course, home of the Juan and Only Margarita, historic in their own right, as they are keeping the old Griggs recipes alive and still in production there. But, again, joining us here in studio right now, 
We are joined by uh, Chio Wolschlager, museum curator for the El Paso Funeral Museum, and of course talking a lot about the upcoming event that will be happening on November 6th, 2 p.m. at y'all's location at 6111 South Desert Boulevard. And at least one thing, more thing I wanted to mention here, get into, is that uh, your vehicle collection. I, I am a nerd about those kind of things, I will say. So the fact that you, of course, got the hearse that we were talking about and some of the accoutrement and, uh, well, clothing that goes along with it is important. But you don't just have the super traditional hearses. You have the, well, updated ones as well, including, uh, this is more of a graphical representation of it, but you have this vehicle, correct? Yes, we do. So that is a 1950s hearse. And I, I kind of, to me, it has kind of a gothic feel. So it's a little bit more Absolutely. of the gothic hearse feel. And it's so exciting. Um, I believe we're also adding uh, custom model versions of mm. all of these to the next show. So uh, for avid collectors, this is a great place to be next Sunday to see all these custom cars, hearses. So it, it'll be exciting. So what I'm describing here for those, again, out in Radio Land, we're talking about a traditional kind of black-looking hearse, except that, I mean, it's got the cab, it's got the back, it's kind of got that, what do you call that, that silver part that, like, swoosh? Is there a name for that? There is, but you got me on that. Ah, okay. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough here. So, I mean, it's got the styling. You would immediately recognize this as a hearse, except for one big change is that this is that 1950s Cadillac style. It's got the fins out the back of it here. Yes, so, yes. that's, I mean, immediately, you, you know when this is from, looking at this here. So, you've got a couple, you know, parts of hundreds of years represented with just within your vehicle collection then. Correct. And you'll get to see more. More being brought in from other collectors mm, around the mm. country on Sunday, uh, and I believe one of them's even been converted into a grill. Oh, interesting! So you will get grilled hot dogs Off from a, a classic hearse <laughs> at the museum. We have one picture up of uh, some of the previous years there that we'll be talking more about, including a different version of that kind of same vehicle we were talking about. So again, impressive here, and then you have one of the newer ones as well that I at least wanted to give you a chance to mention here. That's a, essentially a. Is that a motorcycle, a tricycle, technically? It is. That is a motorcycle. Uh, it's, I believe, a Honda motorcycle with a hearse on the back. So mm. that one used to be also a horse-drawn hearse, oh. but now it has been updated to be, uh, you know, kind of in Harley style right. for riders that want to commemorate their funerals or memorial services with a horse-drawn carriage hearse but on a motorcycle. So this is our Iron Horse, and it has just been unveiled last week, and you wow. will get to see it um, all over town. It is definitely riding mm -hmm. all over town. So it's a great way to kind of, you know, when you're at the end of life, you can kind of ride down that road mm -hmm. <laughs> that was your road. So uh, we do have a lot of avid riders. So this is a great Iron Horse memorial type of, service to also consider interesting there and again for it to describe before y'all it's essentially a harley styled motorcycle but with three wheels on the back for stability Correct. here and then a lower level type of well that kind of horse-drawn hearse like you're talking about with the you know glass walls and kind of a, a solid roof over it so that's fascinating and all of this will be part of what is on display for again oh some of this stuff constantly at the museum, of course, here yeah. as part of your exhibitions. But, then, of course, for the specific event that you got coming up, some of these and more, of course, November 6th, that happening at your all's location. Again, details on that, El Paso Funeral Museum com. Yes. Awesome. Uh, yes, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Absolutely. Here, So we got to take that next break now. Coming out of this break, talking again more with, of course, the Chia Wolschlager Museum Court Curator for the El Paso Funeral Museum about their event and more on their exhibition. So stay tuned. More on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. 
Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Has to mention some of our other great partners in promoting different aspects of local El Paso history, both not even just the uh, what we can remember, but we can actually go out and see and experience and events directly for yourself. Of course, talking here about Celebration of Our Mountains. You can find them, of course, at celebrationofourmountains.org. Long name, just search it up on your favorite search engine and you'll be able to find their extensive list of events. This is the season where getting out and hiking around is a well, given the temperatures a little bit easier, so they got some very interesting ones, including coming up next week, November 5th, hike to the Ruby Mine, as well as indoor events as well, including a guided tour of the permanent exhibits at the Centennial Museum, or for the more adventurous, a Kilborn Hole Volcanic Crater Hike going all the way out there coming up. they got a whole lot of events coming up here, including uh, some things, including, uh, you know, a Tom Lee Month and or Tom Lee Experience, I should say, now correcting myself, uh, including going out to Concordia's at Chinese Cemetery, Geronimo's Cave. There's a lot going on there, so you want to check out the full list for yourself. Again, celebrationofourmountains.org, the place to find all of that here. But, of course, joining us here in studio right now still do have uh, Chia Wolschlager, the museum curator for the El Paso Funeral Museum. Thanks for sticking around with us here. 
Thank you. This is so exciting. I'm glad I get to be here. <laughs> Absolutely glad to have you on to talk about these things because it's talking about the museum, some of its exhibits, and some of the things going on with it. Of course, we do have that special event coming up November 6th at 2 p.m. at you all's location at uh, 6111 South Desert Boulevard. But, of course, there are a lot of permanent things. We're talking about some of the vehicles, of course, in last segment and uh, some of the things that people can see there more or less all the time. And so the, of course, event coming up on November 6th will be uh, some special ones and other things going on out there. But you do have some other permanent exhibits that are going on out there as part of it, including some new ones that will be kind of a part of both kind of hybrid, part both part of the event and permanent exhibition, right? Yes. So what's exciting is that having the museum, we have a lot of artists that come forward and want mm -hmm. to donate art pieces or contribute. And so mm -hmm. this is one of the pieces that will be unveiled, donated by Gabriel, a student uh, from, Tex uh, from Texas Tech. Hmm. And I love it. This this is called You Are Never Too Old to Have Fun, inspired <laughs> by a lesson taught to him by his parents. And so we will be unveiling this. And so thank you, Gabriel. We're so excited. This is a permanent installation that we will have now. And so to describe this here, it is a wrought iron or black metal looking kind of structure here uh -huh. of a swing. Yes. Of what would be very recognizable as a swing, except that it has a metal skeleton sitting in the swinging chair. Does it swing? I'm curious now. It does not really swing, okay. but if it could, it looks like he would be having lots of fun. I mean, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's movement implied there. I'll take that. That's why I ask. Absolutely. It almost looks like it could. And yeah. he's a welding student, so this is all that iron welded, and mm -hmm. it's just beautiful. The detail uh, to the skeleton is phenomenal. So it's definitely something you need to appreciate in person mm. at the event next weekend. Absolutely. So part of your continuing, of course, permanent exhibition. So we were mentioning some of the, I guess the part that I was nerding out the most about the vehicles, which are fascinating, but you do have a lot of other things that are permanently there in the museum, right? Absolutely. I think it's important to mention our very first permanent exhibit is the Purchase Funeral Home Family History. Mm. Established in 1958, Purchase Funeral Homes was started by Don Salvador Perches. So here you have in the first exhibit all of the memento, that is his guayabera you will see. Mm. Those are awards, uh, a lot of the things he had in his office. So it is definitely an ode to Don Salvador Perches starting off the exhibits at the museum. And then, of course, we have others that are, again, appropriate both for the season and for the culture we exhibit here because funerals are not just, of course, what happens, you know, in funeral parlors or even at the gravesite, but it's about the people that are part of it. And so, of course, part of the local traditions and the Southwest traditions in general, the Dia de los Muertos, the Calaveras, all of those parts of it. And so you have a more or less permanent altar set up as well, right? Yes. So this permanent exhibit is an altar created with the three stages, of course, the past, the present, and the future in uh, remembrance of both of his parents, Teresa Perches and Don Salvador Perches. So you will see belongings that were theirs, um, things that they loved, things that they were passionate about. So you will see all of that in a traditional altar for Day of the Dead honoring his parents. And of course, there's a lot more. You mentioned that there's 12 permanent exhibits, right? Correct. There are 12 permanent exhibits, each one with an educational value. I don't know how much time we have to go into each, but... You can at least give us a swath here. Okay, so really interesting. We're going to talk about the Egyptians. Ah, of course. So the Egyptians, this is a fabulous exhibit. It is where the history comes from embalming. They truly mm -hmm. started and perfected embalming. And so there is a... there. You will see um, also another installation of Art Piece Donated, uh, you will see how the process of embalming is done. Uh, okay. So there are great steps. You also have A.J. Minor, who was from the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And so he was brought, he invented what we know as embalming. So you will see a right. whole entire embalming area. And I kind of feel like we owe so much to an embalmer. It is such an amazing position to have in our lives that we don't really give enough credit to an embalmer. So there's a whole entire exhibit that is just for embalming. And of course, the research that A.J. Minor brought to us, because mm -hmm. in the Civil War, when people would pass, they couldn't bring them back on the trains. And so people right. did not have closure for their sons. And so that is where embalming really took place in our country. So there's great yeah. history and knowledge as we go forward in each exhibit. 
That's fascinating because particularly since, I mean, embalming was the phrase that we use for what the ancient Egyptians and other similar cultures did, but maybe a better way to put it would be really regulated drying is essentially what they did because yeah. it wasn't so much injection. I mean, there's, yes, the famous, you know, canopic jars, removal of things, but that was all just to make sure that the body could be essentially dried as opposed to, well, uh, you know, decomposing as is normal or as is a biological factor because of their particular beliefs at that point in time that your actual physical vessel would be what would carry you throughout the, well, your eternity as well. So that's another interesting example. And then, of course, the Civil War where it was, yeah, a dying on far away, even if it was, you know, maybe the next state over that given lack of cars, airplanes, other transportation railroads were still even practically new at that point and largely a military resource, particularly during the Civil War. So yes, there right. wasn't a, well, let me just hop on the, you know, the next bus out of town right. to go and find it kind of thing. So the changing and that using of then the chemical, more chemical embalming was revolutionary in its own way, even if for, you know, a very dark period of our history. Yes, there are all of that you will see at the museum. You will see the chemicals like you speak of. You'll see the cooling boards, the equipment. All of that is there. And so it is really interesting to see the history of embalming, both from the Egyptians and mm -hmm. from our perspective. That's fascinating. Any other particular exhibits you'd like to mention there that are also on exhibit in the museum? So we talked about the Queen and of their course. traditions, but another one that has huge traditions are the Popes. Oh, and so, yes. uh -huh, so we do have a tribute to the popes in a video on the traditions that they have because that is a whole nother educational mm -hmm. level. So we talk about the popes. Um, also, we have some renditions when uh, the pope came here to the border. Oh, of course. Uh, Purchase Funeral Homes was involved in creating the altar. Uh, so we right. also have the renditions from when they created that and a little bit of the history of when he came because that's that's for our region to really appreciate and say, hey, we were a part of the Pope being here on our sister city with us involved. And so I think that's a great history for everybody to continue to understand our involvement in that. So I wasn't technically, well, there. I was on the U.S. side that day. And so the altar, huge. I could see it from where I was on more or less uh, that raised portion of Paisano that is there. And, of course, the, the Pope did approach the U.S. side of the border and address kind of, you know, benediction towards uh, this side of the border here. But, yeah, that was a very, very important event of recent history there. And I do recall that now coming up about the part of that altar because it wasn't just uh, there and then yeah, whatever. I mean, it was intended to, therefore, be also able to be kind of kept on into the future and kind of uh, put into different places both around Juarez and, and parts of Mexico. Correct. Yes. So all of that you will see. Um, also, I mean, c moving on, we have a lot we also have on display. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we have, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking right now, uh, coffins. Ah, yes. We have a, a lot of coffins for everybody to see. And another thing that's huge to uh, going forward in our lives is going green. It's another exhibit hmm. that we have okay. because it is the green aspect. And so I know that's a whole new movement as we go forward, but you can, you can be a tree. Right. You know, we have other sustainable concepts that uh, we're starting to learn about and implement, and people are really enjoying, I think, that type of a passing with more of a green ending. So I think all, all the new things also going on, you can be a diamond. Mm -hmm. You yep. know, we have a lot of new things, too, going on in our tradition, in our in our business and so profession and we want to also show people everything that is trending in this in this funeral industry as well interesting yeah kind of a as opposed to the option is either burial or cremation and then you are put in the location you are and that is your journey to eternity so to speak it's a little bit more kind of concentrated thought about okay what happens after the funeral, after the ceremony, what is kind of then the well physical things that happen after that point, as opposed to just the again the traditional concept? Yes, absolutely. Everything from like scattering at the sea, uh, uh, scattering boxes. I mean, there's just so many new concepts that exist that nobody knows about that I think is really important to be able to define each option that we have. Interesting. So that's, again, part of what you can see, of course, at the El Paso Funeral Museum. You want to go and see it for a specific event. They do have, again, coming up on November 6th. They're uh, 2 p.m. at their location at 6111 South Desert Boulevard. Again, all the details going on with that, uh, with the special events going on out there, the Hearse and Classic Car Show, and try all of those details, uh, purchase funeral home uh, dot com or El Paso Funeral Museum dot com. Again, guest here in studio with us right now is... Chia Wolschlager Museum Curator for the El 
Paso Funeral Museum. Talking a little bit more with her after we come out of this next break. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915 Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Of course, at least one more of our great partners in talking about different aspects of local and regional history. Of course, Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. Find him over on TalkandRockRadio.com, doing just a whole lot of different study and different well, remembrances of his own, having been involved in what you might consider the golden age of early rock and roll here in El Paso, including, well, just a whole lot of artists that you will remember and that he had interactions with. Of course, he ran the very well-received very popular while he was running it anyway. Border Legend Store had a ha- chance to have a hand in that myself here. And so this is keeping that idea, that celebration and those history bits alive. Interviewing as he does a lot of his, well, former compatriots on the band stage here. So again, TalkinRockRadio.com is where you can find him and those specific types of programs here. But again, joining us in studio right now, we are joined by uh, Chia Wolschlager, the museum curator for the El Paso Funeral Museum. So we're talking a lot about the exhibits and the things in it. One more we want to get to here is, of course, recognition of those who have done things both for the museum and for the funeral home overall. So you do have a specific memorial for previous directors of the funeral home. Correct. Um, I think we can all kind of agree we just came out of um, something very new to us, and that was COVID. Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize is that, yes, there's first responders, but there's also last responders. Ah, And so we have a tribute, a very important tribute to our last responders from Purchase Funeral Homes who stuck through the COVID pandemic and never faltered to work daily. And it is just such a stressful job that they take to heart. And so this is a tribute that we've created um, kind of in a COVID memorial, Mm -hmm. uh, but also just uh, honoring those last responders at Purchase Funeral Homes, our directors that worked and that were lost during our COVID period of time. So, again, a lot of history and modern occurrences, of course, being recognized there as well as it becomes history. So, again, all this can be seen. When are you all open regularly? We keep talking about the event itself here, but if you want to come and see all of this, uh, make their own tours, those kind of things, when is the best time or when can they? The museum is open during the funeral home hours. So that is Monday through Friday. You can come and see it and walk through it anytime between 8 and 5. And I welcome also um, any... uh, schools that want to come and do mm-hmm. tours you are always welcome to call the funeral home and schedule a private tour and we also invite events we mm-hmm. have an event center there too it holds uh, about okay. 50 to 60 people so we can also do tours we can do events and so we welcome you to come and call us and we will be there to do the tours for you of course and again this is uh, as we're talking about at this time leading up to next weekend the upcoming of course 
event at the El Paso Funeral Museum, the Hearst and Classic Car Show and Shrine, uh, with an altar contest, museum anniversary, and Lucha Frontera exhibition, and a whole lot more. Again, 6th of November, starting at 2 p.m. at their location at uh, 6111 South Desert Boulevard. And so details online, of course, El Paso Funeral Museum.com and Purchase Funeral Home.com. Find it in either of those locations or again online, as you mentioned here. And a lot of events coming up as part of that, quite the list of things, including, of course, that Lucha show, car shows, a lot of that. We'll be talking more about some of the features of the event and some of the things going into it a little bit more in depth in the next hour of the program. But just in general, as curator, again, of the El Paso Funeral Museum, what do you hope people get from it if they come through or if they find out about it or want to learn more? What's a, If there's a big takeaway they can get, what do you hope that is? Okay, I think the most important thing or the thing that excites me the most is the educational component. Um, I don't want people to think that this is a haunted house. Because mm-hmm. it is not a haunted spooky house. This is truly an educational experience with 10 exhibits that are purposefully made for educating. So to me, the most exciting thing is to see the kids' faces when they walk into this museum and they see the 1850s horse-drawn hearse mm-hmm. and their eyes just get so big. And so for me, it's really important for people to understand the culture of our region that is presented in this museum. And, of course, all the historical components and educational components of each of the permanent exhibits at the El Paso Funeral Museum. So kind of, I mean, yes, we are talking about this in reference to, of course, what may be otherwise known as spooky season. But this is not a pop-up. This is not anything being done in a flippant way, but with great you know, gravity and respect for the subject matter of, again, what is one of the, again, earliest things that we define as human culture, but also, I mean, one of the things that define how we are as current cultures as well, because how we deal with, I mean, in a certain way, though, how we deal with those that can do nothing for us is telling, but also how we deal with those that we want to remember and have live on in our memories is well, incredibly defining. I mean, that's half of how we define each individual, different aspects and different areas around the world. Like you were talking about visiting different places is, you know, how do they treat those that are no longer with them? How do they remember them and uh, the ways they do it? There are similarities. There are great differences. And those end up in their own way, defining that culture. Absolutely. I think you just wrapped it up so beautifully. But yes, that is it. it is definitely respecting and memorializing all these cultures, our culture here on the border, especially and uh, appreciating it. Uh, And of course, death is difficult. And so Mm -hmm. this is something that I find gives us a little bit more insight into the whole concept and the traditions that go with it. So we've really, really put in a lot of education for everybody to appreciate and walk away with all that greatness. And we invite you to become a Katrina that day and uh, (laughs) and enjoy all the artists that have put their heart and soul into this and our volunteers. And exhibits and vendors, there's just so much going on, and we appreciate everybody for being a part of all of this. Absolutely. So, again, guest right now has been uh, Chio Wolschlager, of course, with the, uh, well, curator with the El Paso Funeral Museum. We'll be talking, uh, she'll be departing with us now, but we'll be talking more about those involved with the museum in hour two of the program, and again, more about the events and some of the things going on with them. So, Chio, thank you very much for joining us here today to talk about the museum. Thank you so much for having us. We look forward to seeing you next weekend. Absolutely. Hope I can make it out there as well, but stay tuned for more of the El Paso History Radio Show after this next break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest.
Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today.
The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. 
Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com. 
M numeral one EP.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long term appreciation, call 915 592 4549. 915 592 4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915 588 1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it on air, online, live streaming through the Free and Reliable iHeartRadio app, or joining us over on the various social media pages, El Paso History Radio Show, El Paso History TV, on Facebook and YouTube, respectively. Also, Twitter and Twitch, a lot of places that you can get at us, make your comments on the program and of course catch the replays of this and previous ones but starting off hour two of the program now as we regularly do talking this week with the el paso history moment produced by documentary filmmaker jackson polk talking this week about the rio vista farm rio vista farm in socorro texas was established in 1915 as one of El paso's poor farms a place where poor people could live rio vista flourished through the great depression in 1929 and hosted public welfare programs. It served as a temporary base for Civilian Conservation Corps in 1936 and as a reception and processing center for the Bracero program from 1951 to 1964 when it closed. Unlike most Texas poor farms of the time, Rio Vista's familial model welcomed neglected children, in addition to indigent adults, sheltered hundreds of them during its operating years. The buildings at Rio Vista Farm are adobe and are in need of restoration. In 2015, the city of Socorro allocated $1.1 million for restoration of the farm. In 2016, Rio Vista was declared a national treasure by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Rio Vista's farm's history reveals a nationally significant yet overlooked side of the American experience and remains a testament to the stories and contributions of the many skilled Mexican guest workers brought into the U.S. to aid with farm labor shortages. Of the 18 remaining buildings at Rio Vista Farm, only five are maintained and in use. The others sit empty and deteriorating, with the building built for the Bracero program the most dilapidated. Without a strategy for a preservation and reuse, this binationally significant site could be lost beyond repair. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. Again, you can catch those every week and, of course, over on our social media. And, of course, I have to mention some of our other great partners in promoting El Paso history. Barbara Given Bainey, operator of the great Facebook group Remember in El Paso When. You can go there for archive pictures galore, including some of the things that we've discussed here and in previous editions. They have 33,000 members, more than now. And, of course... Maintaining such a group is no mean feat, so uh, they are always asking that you, A, if you use their pictures with their history attached, please give credit to the site so that they can, uh, well, get what they deserve from it. But also, they are also always looking for a few good moderators and administrators. Of course, chief admin owner and historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB, plus admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and moderator Ben Vincent, always looking for some others to help them out with the site there. So again, visit them at Remember in El Paso. So when, but of course, continuing now with hour two of our program here today, joined here for hour two of the program by uh, Nini Calaverita, uh, better known as uh, Nidia Marta, uh, of course, the ambassador for the Museum of the El Paso Funeral Museum. Thank you very much for joining us here in studio today. 
Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely happy to have you on because we were talking in hour one of the program a decent amount about you know some of the history of its own creation of the museum itself and of course what's going to be on exhibit there and is on permanent exhibit. But of course we do have that special event that is coming up here again. If people want to see it from the El Paso Funeral Museum, of course El Paso Funeral Museum dot com for the details. But the Hearst and Classic Car Show and Shine coming up on November sixth. It's not. I mean, it's of course appropriate for the season, but it's not just that. Of course, it's also recognized of traditions and other things and of course uh, the many important cultural things that we have going on in our region so of course have to uh, make a somewhat mention of uh, what you are wearing here as you're in studio with us today wearing a very stylized outfit how would you describe it <laughs> well this is actually my daily style oh ah, okay yes it's i mean i try to embrace it more in october uh, of course but yeah it's it's pretty much part of my wardrobe Excellent. So, I mean, one thing I have to point out here is on your uh, wrist, a well, you called it a bracelet, but uh, it's I, would, a bracelet. I would say it's a little bit more advanced than that. It's essentially a tracing out of the finger bones here. So this is somewhat stylized, as you say here, but it's not necessarily out of line here. With Again, you're, uh, well, well, you go by uh, stage name, so to speak, here of uh, Nini Calaverita because the Calavera, you know, the Catrinas, and those parts of the styling of this season are both, you know, cultural, immediately recognizable for a whole lot of people, but there is, it's not just a, yeah, you know, Spanish, you know, Hispanic theming on Halloween. It's its own deep cultural set of traditions. That's correct. And it's for Dia de los Muertos. Mm -hmm. It's part of our culture. And this begins back in 1910, actually, mm -hmm. by an illustrator working for a newspaper back in the day and he all he was doing is making fun of politicians yeah of course <laughs> so that's where it all begins and then uh frida Kahlo, uh tried to adopt it also mm -hmm. to her paintings and from there on our uh our culture and us mexicans we just embrace it add colors bedazzles Mm -hmm. Pretty much everything we have because this actually represents our souls. Right. So we got a couple examples of you here, and uh, I believe that is you on the left in a previous year of this kind of event, right? That's correct. And so, and that's not exactly a close up. So let's find a little bit closer up with you here, showing again the again immediately recognizable and distinctive both well styling, dressing, and it's similar ish to what you got on today. That kind of well, might people might consider in general that older style of dress, maybe Victorian in some ways. Here, uh, I think some of the original drawings we're referring to there as well included just these gigantic hats, right? Among other things that a uh, that may be a little bit more uh, recently shown in popular media and movies such as like Coco, among other things. That All that styling, again, it's not just a movie thing. It's about, well, representing, again, the, you know, the spirit, the soul, those deceased, and remembering them. So talk a little bit about what you have on here and, again, the significance of it, particularly for yourself. Uh, well, this one represents how I was feeling that particular day. Mm-hmm. It, like I said, it represents your soul. So you have to, it depends on how you feel, the colors you want to wear, like even on the wig that I'm wearing in that moment, or the big puffy skirt. Mm -hmm. The usual one, it's, uh, it's like a mermaid kind of a dress. Okay. That's the original one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely here. And so again, some more representations of it here. So when we're talking about Dia de los Muertos and all the parts of it here, again, some of the more, you know, I guess, uh, recent historical, is that a good way to put it here? Depictions, I mean, you're going back to 1910, of course, but even the traditions behind it go back even further, particularly when we start getting to not even just the iconography you have behind it, but some of the core installations, including the altars, right? Of course, yes. This begins back with the Mexicas mm -hmm. and Mayans. All of our a part of our culture, they they embrace death very deeply. Um, that's why they 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 call it the underworld. They just run rituals like the altares. So that's where it all begins. Mm -hmm. We start running altares for those who have passed, because we believe that they are back on November the first and November the second. So it's similar to essentially if you want to go into kind of the core concepts behind what we have, the modern concept of Halloween, All Hallows Eve, as a time when essentially the veil thins and the space between these worlds we're talking about becomes more malleable and less, you know, 
final and immovable. So the idea of there being visitations, that's why a lot of these things, these altars specifically, uh, end up being, you know, again, traditionally done around grave sites. That's correct. So we believe that uh, because of the full moons and uh, because of the time of the year, according to Mexicas, this is the perfect time for us to light that white candle, place um, salt, water, the four elements pretty much, mm -hmm. just so we can make sure that only our loved one will cross that thin line mm -hmm. and add other entities that we we don't want to welcome in our place. Absolutely here. And that's why one of the, of course, the uh, traditions that come along with this is of uh, placing of favorite items or, you know, preferred types of food, drink, elements like you're talking about there, along with that for, you know, the specific person that is being remembered. So, of course, there is a general aspect of remembering those who have passed. But again, particularly with the altars, it's not a it's not a general purpose. It is something it, it's specific. Yes, it's very specific, and it depends on the person that has passed away. Like, let's say a member of your family love a specific brand of, of beer in a specific plate like enchiladas. That's what you're going to place in this altar to represent that one person specifically. So specifically then, given uh, well, well, your embracement of it, your involvement with the museum, as well as uh, the way this affects your daily life, what does, you know... Dia de los Muertos, these remembrances, the Catrinas, the styling. What does this all mean to you? It means a lot, but I actually didn't really learn until uh, a couple of years ago. Really? <laughs> yes, because this war, this is still a very big taboo in, in, in my country. Not all of us know what this really means. It's, it's a heightened culture and... Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do now is for people to know and understand what this really is. Like Coco the movie, mm. they explain very well what this means mm. for us. And it's a celebration of life. Right. We're not celebrating death whatsoever. It's a celebration of life. And that's why I get along with, with Perche's Funeral Homes. And mm. this is the project we have to educate people. To educate our community that are unaware of the how beautiful is this culture, our culture. Absolutely here. So again, a lot of that going to be on display for that upcoming event. Again, if more people want to find out information about it, uh, purchase funeralhome.com or Paso Funeral Museum.com because again on November 6th we'll be having again that hearse and classic car show and shrine with an uh, altar contest, museum anniversary, and uh, Lucha Frontera exhibition here. So Again, given the both somber nature in its own way of, I mean, what a lot of people think of it as a funeral home, but again, this particular cultural celebration, I can imagine someone saying, well, how do, how do these reconcile here? But again, like you said, it's about being a celebration here. So all of this is in recognition of not necessarily the fact that, uh, you know, people have passed, but that they lived. Correct. And uh, the museum, we also explain how other culture embrace. Uh, their celebration, mm -hmm. their funeral processions and everything. And we're, we're trying to educate them on, on this specific reason. We all are celebrating life. Mm -hmm. It's in a different ways, of course. But if you pay attention to other cultures, we're all pretty much doing the same. We're in the same boat. Exactly. Again, the, the human condition, as it's sometimes put there, because this is, you know, some facts of life. Another way to put it, the fact of the matter is that this is something that we will all experience in our own way at one point in time. And how you approach it is very important for you personally, but also like culturally and societally, as you mentioned there. So again, celebration of the remembrance of it in this way. So for anyone that kind of has that idea that, well, this is kind of, you know, morbid, macabre or flippant in a way, you know, there's the, all the whole spooky, spooky season. There are, like we were talking about last segment, there are haunted houses out there so for those that are maybe confused and trying to take it in that vein what do you say to them <laughs> well um it could be very awesome to do that also but we don't <laughs> fair enough <laughs> no no we don't we educate people we educate our community and we're just trying to show what our culture is 
absolutely here. So again, guest in studio with us right now is uh, Nidia Marta, ambassador for the museum, maybe better known as uh, Nini Calaverita. Again, you can see her, probably because you're going to be out there during the event, of course, right? Yes, of course. Of course, there. I mean, given the name, you kind of have to be uh, Calaverita. <laughs> if you're not going to be out there at this day, what are you doing? But so again, <laughs> that coming up on November 6th there. Again, we've got to take that next break of the hour right now. But coming out of this break, talking a little bit more about, of course, the tradition, uh, the importance behind them, and, well, how this event plays into it. So stay tuned. More on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for Talk El Paso, airing live on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so. Of course, a lot of ways that you can watch the show, interact with it, uh, add your two cents. Of course, uh, over on the various social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, either look for it under Andrew J. Polk or El Paso History, El Paso History Radio Show, El Paso History TV, all those things be able to find this and the archive of the programs here. I've got to tell you, of course, what's coming up next week on the program. Next week, going to be talking with uh, Troy Ainsworth, regional preservation specialist with some uh, specific titles he's been working on, but also talking about some of the uh, well, early historical architectural history of the area, including some uh, very important specific features and figures so stay tuned for that coming up next week on the program here and uh, future weeks got a lot more coming for you as we get into again that better hiking season just as a hint for you of course uh, another sponsor to remind you about mission del rey southwest go there with out-of-town visitors for souvenirs jewelry gifts and decor items they have quite the selection their twelve thousand square foot showroom on lee trevino and uh, Pelicano right there. Uh, just look for the sign, particularly as you're going up Lee Trevino, and they've got uh, more than you can shake a stick at. I mean, that they have sticks, too, if you really want that. Uh, they both have Native American products. They have 
furniture, outdoor patio furniture. Some of the stuff they got in last time I was out there is actually this cast aluminum stuff that is uh, very durable, very good looking. Looks like cast iron, but won't crush your foot as bad if you happen to drop it on it. So uh, check them out for those. And also items for the literal flavor of the Southwest with the uh, food items that they're constantly being restocked with. So again, missiondelray.com because they do ship around the world. Or again, visit their 12th thousand square foot showroom there on Lee Trevino and Pelicano mentioned the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount want to give them a call find the directions or just find out their selection 915-440-2140 that's 915-440-2140 but again joining us here in studio right now we do have uh, Nidia Marta better known as uh, Nini Calaverita ambassador for the El Paso Funeral Museum thank you very much for sticking around with us today Thank you. Absolutely, because we were talking about some of the traditions, some of the aspects of it that are important for those kind of regional celebrations. So I wanted to focus on one thing you said here real quick when it came down to kind of the the cultural impact of this. Again, I think like anyone in this region, but even around, you know, different parts of the country, if not the world, may have at least seen some of the iconography. Again, even if it wasn't for the movie that we talked about, Coco, they may have seen, you know, the representation of, you know, the the sugar skulls, of the painted skulls, of the particular style of dress, the Catherines, all of that kind of thing. But it's interesting that you mentioned here that it's always, it's still, even with that, that level of celebration and culture around it, that there's this aspect of taboo here. So when it comes to, to that and the fact of the matter that, I mean, death is one of those things that a lot of people treat like uncomfortably at best or sometimes a lot worse. Of course, here, when you consider it and and how you, again, do what you do as both an ambassador for the museum as how then you then celebrate these events here, what do you kind of hope people take away from it when they they see that kind of display and that kind of uh, cultural significance? Sadness. They need to take sadness away even though it's it's a very touchy feeling, but we want to create, if if we can say it that way, um, on on a new way to celebrate life mm-hmm. in a funeral procession, to celebrate it with colors, not not just dark colors or black colors. It's all it's colorful because it's a celebration. It's a mm. fiesta. So part of our culture, it, it's embracing exactly that. It's a celebration. So you have to celebrate what your loved one used to do, what is living behind, mm-hmm. you know, what knowledge does it leave to you in your life? How, how did it touch your life? And not just uh, tears and sadness during the, the funeral procession, we uh, we do understand that there's sadness. I have lost a lot of a lot of family members, and it's sad. But I learned not to cry mm-hmm. because there's there's no reason to cry. You have to be happy for them. They're in a better place. They're in a better place than you. That's for sure. And they're they're doing much better. So and we all will will see each other again. It's fascinating to say sadness is the takeaway from it here because a lot of times celebrations, fiestas, those kind of things don't, they're not phrases that are often used around. It's a sad celebration here. Like that just uh, comes up with like, you know, uh, poorly attended, you know, children's birthday parties. But again, it's the fact that it's a, a factor and facet of life here that sadness is not something to be run away from, but rather embraced and, and learned from, essentially. Again, a celebration of their life kind of in the, uh, it is better to have loved and lost than never loved at all kind of reasoning there. Correct. And you can start little by little. <laughs> That's how I started. Um, for example, with my grandpa, when he passed away, he requested music, live music. Mm. And he had live music for seven hours at the cemetery. <laughs> wow. We ordered pizza, the pizza delivery the night, delivery. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we have to go pick it up. But there was pizza. We had beer because he loved beer. I mean, we were celebrating. There was a lot of crying at the beginning, but then after the music starts, we understand that it was a celebration. And it, it was me, actually, <laughs> <laughs> calling the, the music people and just suggesting crazy stuff, but they <laughs> love it. They love it, and the party didn't end until 4 a.m., I believe. Sounds like a good party then. Here. It was. Again, that's uh, Nidia Martha, again, better known as uh, Nini Calaverita, ambassador 
for the El Paso Funeral Museum. Again, information about what they've got going on and, of course, the upcoming event November 6th at 2 p.m. at their location there at 6111 South Desert Boulevard. Uh, you can find them online at ElPasoFuneralMuseum.com here. You'll be talking more with uh, Nini here as well as a lot more about the upcoming event, some of the competitions involved with it. So stay tuned. More here after this next break here on the El Paso History Radio Show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, some of our other great partners in promoting, again, these aspects and what we talk about with El Paso history is definitely El Paso Wink. You can go there each and every week for our promo announcements with some more in-depth and information about the kind of topics, the guests, and even a picture or two to whet your appetite for what will be coming up in the next week. So, of course, uh, to receive El Paso Wink, El Paso's business journal for home or business delivery, order it online at elpasoink.com. Also, get your digital subscription there. If you like one more sponsor, we also have to mention there, of course, Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker, Heritage Real Estate. Call him at 915-588-1850. That's 915-588-1850 because he's an excellent realtor and his team are well, our go-to for our family here in town for El Paso Homes for sale or rent. They make sure that you get, well, what you need with your homes and even property management if you've got that going on in your life. Your reason that I'm in the current home I am, the reason that bunch of my relatives are in the current homes they are and even uh, managing properties for friends of mine here so highly recommended making sure that uh, you get taken care of what you need to so again 915-588-1850 the number to call for patrick total coldwell banker heritage real estate but again joining us here in studio right now we are joined by uh, nidia marta better known as uh, in this circumstance uh, nini calaverita ambassador for the el paso funeral museum of course we're talking a lot about the traditions the significance behind them but there's a lot more that's coming up for the museum in these coming days of course you can see it you know during regular uh, business hours at the purchase funeral home but of course with what's coming up november 6th there is quite a lot on the schedule here i mean just listing off a few things hearse and classic car show and shrine is the actual name of it but then also altar contest a museum anniversary and lucha frontera exhibition just taking a look at uh, the breakdown of events sure it starts at uh 2 p.m like we were talking about but it goes a decent clip into the night until uh, you know for many hours so uh, not quite a 4 a.m kind of uh, fiesta like we were talking about previously but you can see it from there going into uh, into a decent part of the night there including again uh the uh again the lucha frontera exhibition uh you'll be sh actually doing a showing of coco as well right that's correct we will be showing coco i believe at 3 p.m yep 3 p.m three to five years so and then there's also again one of the more probably 
I don't know, maybe fascinating things to talk about here will be the fact that there's that hearse and car show that will be happening as a part of it here. So uh, we've got some examples from previous years. Of course, you all have your own hearses. I mean, this won't be necessarily part of the uh, car show with this one, the historic one. They've got some other ones that you will be pulling out and be on exhibition there. But you have a lot of people that come and visit and uh, be a part of it that way, including it's similar-ish to one that you all have. But this one is uh, quite interestingly styled here. Tell me what we're looking at here. This belongs to Gary Blackwell, and he's been with us doing this uh, for four years since wow. we uh, inaugurated the the museum. Um, Gary came from uh, is three hours away from El Paso. Oh, okay. And you'll see him driving with a hearse, with his classic car, the black one, mm. and two coffins. One is a coffin mobile, and the other one have okay. <laughs> And the other one have a nice chest with a bar and a grill. And he actually grill hot dogs on mm -hmm. every event of us. So it's, it's pretty fun. Got kind of a, a zoom in on it there that, yes, he will be grilling hot dogs on a casket style thing here. And again, it uh, looks like uh, quite the character himself, honestly, there. And the hearse itself, I don't want to miss that point here, is this, uh, again, similar-ish to one of the ones that you have. It looks like kind of like that 1950s uh, fin styling. But this one also with the kind of somber black hood, but then uh, bright yellow along the span of the body here. Yes, because he's happy. He's a happy person. <laughs> Essentially, seems like he's having a good time in some of these things. So that'll be a part of it. And you also have, uh, you know, other parts of the car show that come out here. This is a a, a Ghostbusters style uh, pickup truck from a uh, previous year there as well. That's correct. The young Ghostbusters will be with us again, making slime for the kids. This is just nothing but kids playing with kids, being kids in a fun event, which is uh, Day of the Death. Absolutely. So and so kind of as a part of that here, both the you know, celebration aspect, there is also, of course, the car show will have its own parts of competition here, but also there will be a altar competition um, that will be happening uh, during the event. And so when it comes to that, what, what goes into it? What will be happening during this altar competition? So we have we are accepting five competitors for the altares. And the altares are usually placed right in front of the funeral home. Just like this one right here, this altar wins first place last year. This is taller than you are, just to make a mo note of it here, essentially. It is, yes. And it have, if you notice, it have the seven layers. Each mm. altar originally, it's supposed to have seven layers. The copal, it's supposed to be lighted the entire ceremony. And these people actually um, are very well known on on the community they mm. they do rituals like real ones ah okay real ceremonies so this is not just a, a competition for them as you do have some other examples of the things that uh, people put together in their own representations but uh, so there's i mean a lot of seriousness behind this but some people take it very seriously is what you're saying that's correct yes it is actually very a very serious situation but we also bring happiness and joy Absolutely here. So for the altar competition there, I mean, you mentioned some of the concepts of it and some of the, you know, core co core things that are intended to go into it to make it defined as this as opposed to, you know, an assemblage of random things that uh, may or may not relate to someone. So actually for the competition, what are you going to be looking for and uh, what, do, what do people need to know if they, they want to compete in it? So we're, we're asking actually for the very basics because okay. we, we, under, we're, we don't want to broke anybody's budget. We want to help and uh, educate people. That's our goal. So we only request for them to have water, salt, uh, the copal, if it's possible. They don't really have to do it, but if they want to, I mean, it's kind of risky because it'd have to be lighted and mm. it'd have to run the, the entire ceremony. So it's very difficult. It needs to have the the layers, not the seven mm -hmm. layers, but two to three, most likely. The picture of their loved ones, mm -hmm. uh, food that represents what they like, the drink, flowers, of course, like the Sempasushitl. Mm -hmm. That's very important also. 
Hey, we've got some of the representation uh, from uh, previous years up here. And again, uh, again, familiar styling that people would probably be pretty well instantly able to recognize about what these look like and what these are. So that'll be a part of it here, of course, what you got coming up. But then don't want to miss out on any other parts of it. Again, the car show, uh, what is going on there, the showing of Coco. But then again, the, uh, well, the luchador part of it here. I don't want to miss out on that here. So tell me from your perspective how that fits in. <laughs> Well, it's, like I said, it's, it's just a celebration. We're trying to bring fun and, and um, entertain people, entertain the community. And we know El Paso community love Lucha Libre. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, Perche's Funeral Homes make the decision of bringing them to our celebration. Uh, we know that people love it. People actually pay for this event. And for our event, is going to be free. So first mm, come, first serve, uh, they will only accept 200 people on the arena. Ah, okay. So that's very important to know because it's it's free. It's a free event. So give, keep that in mind to make sure to get there early. Again, it starts at 2 p.m. there at 6111 South Desert Boulevard. But again, if people want to find information on that, it'll be over on El Paso Funeral Museum dot com here. So sort of a lot of different aspects of it here. Are there any particular parts of, of the competition or, or the events that will be going on that you're most excited for? The Hearst and Classic Car Show and Shine. <laughs> Absolutely here. Yeah. I mean, that'll be a, probably a pretty good part of it i mean the so that that's one of them here are you expecting a lot of vehicles a lot of different hearses and classic cars yes we actually have very specific people that always show up mm -hmm. and some other that are just curious about the event and a little bit aseptic but they all end up having fun and like gary blackwell we also have jake Junell from uh sinister oddities i believe sinister okay. customs uh, um okay. they made also their own hers oh wow really? made out of uh metal i don't know if you have the picture somewhere I don't think, there i don't think we've got that one here but uh well, something to look forward to if people head out there. Again, it'll be happening on the ground of the purchase funeral home that we got going on there. So uh, there's some example. It could also be vendors. There'll be a lot of other things going on around it here. So, again, all the details on that, people can check it out over on uh, purchasefuneralhome.com or elpasofuneralmuseum.com. Again, guest in studio right now is uh, Nidia Marta, better known as uh, Nini Calavarita in this circumstance here, of course, talking about uh, as she is the ambassador for the museum and what's going to come up during it. Got to take that uh, next break here. Coming out of this break, uh, tell you what, of course, some of the important details of this event are, tell you what's going to be coming up and close out the show. So stay tuned for more here at the El Paso History Radio Show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140. For souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. 
Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso. Thank you all so very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk, coach of covering a lot of ground when it comes to the upcoming both events and the ongoing exhibitions for the El Paso Funeral Museum. Again, still joined here in studio by Nini Calaverita, uh, more maybe better known as uh, Nidia Marta, with the uh, ambassador for the El Paso Funeral Museum. Again, with all of the events that are coming up again around November 6th here, very specific. Specifically, there is a, a lot of details to go into, and we've covered quite a lot of them. What I want, I want to make sure we get to here is the fact that it is the museum anniversary as well as part of it, right? That's correct. It's our fourth anniversary. So, of course, it makes sense that this was the kind of thing started about this time four years ago here. So, given the fact that you all are, I mean, in the historic space anyway, relatively new, I mean, there's, of course, a, a lot of movement and a lot of things and a lot of the ex exhibits that you all have. Are there any things that are any kind of like a glimpse into the future, or things that you all are working on that you want to give people either with it comes to this event or, you know, other things that will be going on with the museum? Of course, we will keep creating events for the community to to make them uh, sh make sure that they're they feel welcome and they mm. feel safe also because there's there's a lot of taboos around being a funeral home having a funeral museum inside the funeral home so when people have asked hey what's the address is this a funeral home so <laughs> we have to explain a little bit and uh, a lot of people show up a lot of them don't because they are scared they're afraid this might be a haunted house, and it's not. It's completely different. It's right. It's history behind. It's culture. Absolutely. So, I mean, one of the core concepts we keep we keep getting to here is kind of it breaking those taboos and allowing for a greater embracement of both, you know, natural progression, but also, of course, specifically this part of this culture here. So, if anyone was having those kind of like uh, compunctions or like a, uh, I don't know, particularly for the event itself here, what would you tell them? What would you, what would you want them to know? Uh, well. You will be welcome in our place. <laughs> we are uh, we're happy people. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of celebrations. We're offering Lucha Libre. We're offering Coco the movie. We have the Altares competition. And we have beautiful cars on exhibition. Very interesting. We do have skulls, but they're happy skulls full of flowers and bedazzles. Absolutely here. So again, showing up some of the pictures from uh, previous year's events, both the competitors as well as uh, what's been going on with some of the people, also with the car shows there as well. So again, starting at 2 p.m. on the November 6th, that day, they're at the funeral home. I mean, it'll be all over the place, right? Both inside and outside because, of course, the movie and those showings, all that kind of stuff. Yes, is we're occupying this time uh, the entire funeral home. Mm -hmm. And other events has been only like small section of it. But we are having three events in one. I usually divide each event during the year. Oh, and okay. uh, this time we, we make the decision of running them three at the same time. So it'll be a good, good, quite a jam-packed schedule on its own there. But again, all towards kind of the larger purpose of, I guess maybe awareness is the quite right way to put it, but also it's not exactly the wrong way of people understanding, you know, what it is, the importance of these kind of things. So again, from this, this kind of an event and people coming out to it uh, beyond some of the previous things we said about, you know, the concept and understanding of the cultural significance from this kind of event, who would you consider it appropriate for and what do you hope they get out of it? It's the entire family. We will have uh, activities for the kids the grown-ups can enjoy Lucha Libre mm -hmm. after that. And then, and it's educational. It's part of your culture. So if you want to see it as Coco the Movie, that's fine. Because Coco the Movie is, is beautiful. That's why we are mm -hmm. going to show it. Um, so if you want to see it that way and think that our event is going to be like Coco the Movie, please do so. Because you'll be surprised on how much more we, we are having. Absolutely. And so just 
personal meaning for you then of this both this kind of study, the, you know, the educational aspect that you talk about here, as well as you know the impact it's had on on your life. What would you want people to know what, again? What this has meant to you? This meant to me that uh, is is my family, is my culture, is my friends, is my loved ones, and my loved ones already know. You better don't cry at my funeral. I need a, a big celebration, mm. full of color, full of Catarinas, a lot of tequila, a lot of food, and people to enjoy it. Absolutely. Here, So, again, talking about what is going to be going on at the El Paso Funeral Museum, both with their ongoing exhibitions as well as, again, of course, what will be coming up November 6th there. Again, all the details on what they will be doing for their Hearst and Classic Car Show and Shine Altar Contest Museum Anniversary uh, Lucha Frontera Exhibition. Details on that on ElPasoFuneralMuseum.com. Also look for them over on their social media as well as PurchaseFuneralHomes.com where you can find the general details information location but again if you want to find it for yourself there they are at uh, 6111 south desert boulevard and the 79932 zip code here so uh nini thank you very much for coming in to talk to us today about some of these aspects some of your experiences and uh, what people should take away from it and of course what the museum does here today no thank you for giving us the opportunity absolutely here so that's going to do it for us for today I want to thank everyone that did uh, tune in to the show here we'll of course be doing it next week again next week going to be talking about some of the architectural history and preservation going on in the region so all of that and more to come up on the El Paso History Radio Show have a great weekend y'all see y'all next week you are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archive radio programs the El Paso